talking from a series titled Emotional Intelligence. Emotional Intelligence. Come on, y'all say Emotional, emotional intelligence. intelligence. One more time, Emotional, emotional intelligence. intelligence. And Emotional Intelligence is simply when you have the ability to manage your emotion and understand the emotions of others so you can get a productive outcome, right? I'm gonna say that again. Emotional Intelligence is when you have the ability to manage your emotions and understand the emotions of others so you can get a positive outcome. I don't know about you, if that's the definition of emotional intelligence, I'm just be the first to say, I done had some moments where I done had some emotional, not so intelligent moments. Amen. Maybe it's just me, but I done had some moments like that where I have not managed my emotions well, and I haven't understood the emotion of others well, so if that's the case, I didn't get the outcomes that I wanted. Amen. But when we're emotional intelligent, yeah. we understand where we are, why do we feel like that, where it's coming from, so I can properly manage myself and understand the emotions of others so I can get a positive outcome. A positive outcome. Because that's the goal. That's the goal is to get a positive outcome. I want to start this off on this morning with a prophetic declaration. Y'all ready for this? Yeah. I said, are y'all ready for this? Y'all yes. gonna talk back to me today. Y'all not gonna sit down and act like y'all don't hear me today. Like y'all just came to play church. Y'all gonna talk back to me today. I need y'all to get engaged on today, okay? Amen. Hey, listen, listen. This is not church as usual. We just came in here just to check the box. No, this is no checking the box today. God does, does desires to do something in your life on today. I said God is going, <laughs> desires to transform your life on today. So I need you to turn off the checking the box box and I need you to engage in what God desires to do. Because listen to me, listen to me. However you, whatever you expect of God, that's what you re receive from God. However you see God, that's what you're going to receive from God. If you came in just to check the box today, then you're just going to get a check the box blessing. Amen. But if you are looking something from bigger from God, if you want those Ephesians tw uh, 320 blessings, then you got to you gotta think bigger. Amen. Like he says that he's able. Now listen, God says he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that you can ask Think or imagine. Listen to me. He said he is able to do it, but the question has to be raised, will you allow him to do it? Because if we just came in and wanted to check the box, then we're just going to get a check the box blessing. And we will leave out of here saying, man, like I, I just went to church and checked the box. But God doesn't want to, God is not satisfied with where you are. He's not satisfied with where you are. So however you see God is how you will experience God. If you see him as a healer, he can be your healer. If you see him as Jehovah Rapha, then you can have healing. If you see him as Jehovah Shalom, then he will be your peace. If you see him as Jehovah Nisi, then he will fight your battles for you. However you see him is how you will receive him. That's right. If you see him as Jehovah Jireh, then he will be your what? If you see him as Jehovah Jireh, then he will be your what? So however you see him in this moment, for the next 30, 35 minutes, however you see him, is how you're going to receive him when you walk out these doors. So whatever you are expecting from him, I need you to get it in your mind right now. However you see, whatever you need from him right now, whatever you need him to be right now, that's how you need to get it in your mind right now. In Exodus chapter number 3, verses number 14, when he tells Moses to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go, to let them out of the abundance they are right now, to get them out of this carnal thinking, to get them out of this thinking thinking, to get them from where they are to where I desire them to be. He said, go tell Pharaoh, I said, let my people go. Moses said, who shall I tell him 
that oh, sent God. me. He says, tell him that I am that I am. Yes. So whatever you need him to be right now, he says, I'll be there. Whatever you need God to be in your situation right now, you need to go tell your problems that my God says, I am that I am. And he's going to be whatever I need him to be right now in my situation. If you need a financial breakthrough right now, God will be your provider. If you need peace right now, God will be your peace in this moment. But you got to tell your problem how big your God is and stop telling God how big your problems are. God says, speak to the mouth. He says, speak to it. Speak to it, and it has to obey. You got to control your emotions in this season. Amen. Your emotions right now may be telling you, I don't feel like it, but you can't allow your feelings to lead you. Remember what I said earlier. Your, your, your emotions, your feelings are simply indicators, but they cannot be the dictators of how you praise God. They can't be the dictators on how you serve God. They can't be the dictators on what you think about God. They can't be the dictators are you making God powerless or we serve an all-powerful God? It's not that God can't, but will we allow him to do it? Listen to me. It's not that God can't do it, but will we allow him to do it? We can't limit a limitless God by our limited thinking. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. We cannot limit God. We cannot limit a limitless God by our limited thinking. We've often heard uh, um, that the sky is the limit, right? No, the sky is not the limit. For the believer, the sky is simply your starting place. It's not the limit. It's simply your starting place. There's no such thing as a box. The only box is, is the box that we create by our limited thinking. Because, again, I'm going to take you back to Ephesians 3 and 20. He says, I'm able to do it seedily. And abundantly above anything that you can ask, think, or imagine. I don't know about you, but it's some of us in here who got some, some crazy big imagination. We dreamers, right? We dream real big. And God says, whatever you can think, whatever you can imagine, he says, I can do much bigger than that. Whatever you can think of, he says, I can do much bigger. Whatever you can dream of, I can do much bigger than that. But we can't limit a limitless God by our limited thinking. Yes, God. You can't limit a limitless God by your limited thinking. Yes. So God says, whatever you can think, whatever you can imagine, whatever you can dream of, whatever you can think of, God says, I can do bigger. God says, I can do bigger. I don't know what you may be asking God for a million dollars. God says, I can add some more zeros to the back of that. You may be asking God for a house on uh, whatever. God says, I can give you a mansion. You may be asking God for a car. God says, I'll give you cars, plural. Whatever you are asking God for, I'm telling you that God says, I can do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that you can ask, think, or imagine. How many people in here are really seeking God for something? How many people in here are really searching God for something? Come on. Come on. Y'all talk back to me. How many people here are really, really expecting God, expecting something from God? If you're expecting it from him, I'm tell you, then you need to prepare for it. You need to act like it. You need to begin to behave like it. You need to prepare for it. You need to, whatever it is, you need to prepare for it. If you are expecting it from an unlimited God, then we have to know that God is able to do it. He is able to do it. We just can't let our emotions dictate on how we believe God. We can't let our feelings outweigh the power of God. We may not feel like it, but that doesn't make God powerless. We may not see it, but that doesn't mean God cannot do it. God is the God of extra helio. That simply means that God is able to make something out of nothing. He's, he's a perfecter in making something out of nothing. The Bible declares in the book of Genesis, it says that the earth was formless and without void. God seen something he did not like. And so what did God do? He spoke to it. He spoke to it. So listen to me. So if you don't like what you are seeing, then change what you are saying. 
If you don't like what you see, then change what you say. God sees something that was out production. He sees something that wasn't producing. He sees something that was darkness. And what did he do? He didn't complain about it. He didn't let his feelings get the best of him. He didn't go run off in a corner and hide and, and just have a pity uh, party by himself. What did he do? He seen something he didn't like. Yeah. So he changed what he said. That's he began right. to speak to it. Right. He began to speak to it. Right. And right. oftentimes, our emotions will tell us to be quiet. Our emotions will tell us, hey, just go over there and don't do nothing. Don't say nothing. But you got to begin to speak to it. What did God do? He spoke again. He spoke to something that wasn't producing. He spoke to something that had voids in it. And so what? how does that apply to us? In Genesis 1 and 26, it says that we was made in the image and the likeness of God. An image can only, it can only, uh, an image, what does an image do? It can only reflect what produced it. Likeness right, is a model. And so we are to be, we our, our, our behavior should be like God. Our behavior should be like God. Come on, y'all looking at me real funny. Y'all, come on, y'all looking at me real funny. Come on, act like you believe it. Act like you believe it. We're supposed to be behaving like God. We're supposed to be acting like God. We're supposed to be speaking to things that are void like God. We're supposed to be speaking to things that are not producing like God. We're supposed to be speaking things into existence yes. that do not appear right now. Right. We're supposed to be speaking to it. Yes. We're supposed to be speaking to it. Come on. Y'all looking at me funny, but it's okay. I'm in the book. I'm in the book. Right. Speak to it. Right. God seen something that was void. It was dark. He began to speak to it. Mm -hmm. In Genesis chapter number one, verse number three, he said, God says, and let there be and let there be and let there be in Genesis chapter number one verse number six God says and let there be and everything that he said at the beginning of the sentence watch this it happened at the end of a sentence everything that he said at the beginning of a sentence it happened at the end of a sentence in Genesis chapter number one verse number nine God says and let there be Everything that he said at the beginning of the sentence, it happened at the end of the sentence. In Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 12, God says, and let there be. Everything that he said at the beginning of the sentence, it happened at the end of the sentence. Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 14, he says, and let there be. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened at the beginning, everything he spoke at the beginning, come on, come on, somebody, somebody got this, right? Y'all still looking at me funny, y'all don't believe yet? Y'all don't believe it yet? Okay, I'm going to give you some money. Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 20. He says, and let there be. Everything he said at the beginning of a sentence. Oh, y'all get it now. Y'all get it. Y'all need some more. Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 24. He says, and let there be. Everything that he said at the beginning of a sentence. Okay, okay. And then he gets out of Genesis verse number 1. I mean, chapter number 1, verse number 26. He says, and let us. Let us make man, and I'm talking about one or two, mankind. He says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So listen to me. If God made us in his image, and an image can only reflect what created it, and likeness is a model. We're supposed to be modeling the behaviors of God, modeling the characteristics of God, modeling what God did, modeling what God said, then what should we be doing? Let there be. Wherever there's a void, let there be. Wherever there's there's not producing in our life, let there be. Wherever there's a void, let there be. Come on. Wherever there's lack, let there be. Wherever there's confusion, let there be. Come on, come on, y'all. Whatever, whatever you need, let there be. Because whatever you say at the beginning of a sentence. If you walk in the power and the authority and the likeness and the image of God, whatever you say at the beginning of that sentence, it ought to happen at the end of that sentence. I'm telling you, you can walk in a room or walk in your house and you can change the whole atmosphere. All you got to do is say what God says and not what you feel. A lot of times it don't change because we
we're speaking out of our feelings. We're speaking out of our emotions. And our emotions are simply indicators, but that never are to be the dictators of where we are or where we are to go next. They're simply indicate. My feelings, my emotions tell me where I am, but they don't dictate where I go. Sometimes my emotions, my emotions and my feelings a lot of times, you know, they will cause me to speak facts. Facts are sitting. Facts simply tell me the right. current situation. Yeah. Yeah. But truth, truth is, truth, truth yeah. is an eternal and a futuristic mm -hmm. promise that God has said about that situation. Y'all yeah. with me? Y'all yeah. with me? Yeah. The facts are, yeah. facts tell you your current situation. Yeah. Your current situation, yeah. the current state I'm in, the current, my current situation in my bank account, mm -hmm. my current feelings, my current emotions, yeah. my current job situation, yeah. my current relationship yeah. situation, my current marriage situation, yeah. my current health situation. Yeah. But that's not true. The truth is, the Bible declares no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. The truth is, I can cast all of my cares upon yeah. him because yeah. he loves me. The yeah. truth is, yeah. God is able to do it secretly and abundantly above yeah. anything that we can ask, yeah. think, or imagine. Yeah. The truth is, God's plans are to prosper me and not to harm me. Right. The truth is, whatever God has said about your situation. Now, the facts are the facts. We can't deny the facts. Well, listen to me. We can't deny the facts. We can't deny them. Those are the facts. Those, that's my current situation. But that's not the end of your story. Your story is to be continued. You got to tell your emotions. Or emotions, I hear you. And you may be telling me facts right now. But that's not the truth. The truth is God says I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and never the borrower. I'm blessed and cannot be cursed. I'm a millionaire. I don't care what my bank account says right now. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all don't believe that. I said I'm a millionaire right now and I don't care what my bank account says. I'm going to say it one more time because y'all looking at me real funny. I'm going to say it one more time. The third time for the Holy Ghost. I'm a millionaire and I don't care what my bank account says. Come on, y'all talk back to me. Y'all, Come on, come on, say it with me. Say, listen to me, listen to me. Put your hand on yourself. Let's prophesy about ourselves. I'm a millionaire. And I don't care what my bank account says. Come on, let's say it one more time. I'm a millionaire. And I don't care what my bank account says. One more time. I'm a millionaire. And I don't care what my bank account says. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. Pray that man. We got some wealthy people in this house. You just can't let your emotions tell you that you are broke. The Bible is, says this. It says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. And let those that are broke say, I am rich. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My emotions don't control me. They simply indicate where I am. They may state the facts, but that's not truth. They may state the facts, but that's not truth. The truth is whatever God says about the situation. Yeah. Can I tell you this? We, we, we talk about Jeremiah chapter number 29, verse number 11, right? Everybody know that one of the most endearing scriptures in all the Bible. Mm -hmm. For I know the plans. Yeah. Plans are to what? Prosper. Prosper you and not to harm you. Yeah. How many of you know that reality is that scripture is in one of the most horrific places in the Bible? Mm. It's in one of the most horrific places in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is when uh, the Babylonians, that the prophet Jeremiah is prophesying to the children of Israel. He listen to me. He's telling them because of your unbelief. Ooh, I'm talking to somebody. He says because of your unbelief, because of your rebellious attitude towards God, who brought you out of bondage that you have been in for over 430 years, because you didn't believe Him, because you seen the miracles. Because he bought you out last week. Because he bought you through last month. Because he bought you from that situation yet last year. And you still are doubting? So he says this. He says, because of your unbelief, he says, you're going to go into Babylonian captivity for 70 years. He's telling them this. He said, and it's going to happen. It's nothing that you can do about it. He said, watch this. If you go back to this, this most endearing verses, uh, 29-11, around... 
verses 29, 3 through uh, 10, he's telling them this. He says, while you are in bondage, God is tripping on this. He says, while you are in captivity, he says this. He says, you are to plant uh, uh, gardens. He says, you are to multiply. He says, you are to produce. He says, keep dreaming. And then he has the audacity to say that, and pray for that place that you are in bondage because if it prospers, then you prosper. And then after he tells them they're going to be in captivity for 70 years, can you imagine how they was feeling? Can you imagine the emotions that they were feeling during that time? He tells them all of that, and then he gets down to verse number 11 and says, I told you all of that because it is. He says, because I know. He says, because I know. You may not know because of the situation that you're in. You may not know because your feelings sometimes override the promise. You may not see it right now because your emotions are speaking louder than the word of God. You may not see it right now because of only thing you can see is what you are going through. You may not see it because what you are experiencing right now. He says, but I know the plans I have for you. And my plans are to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and expect the end. Why does he tell them that? Because I'm sure in that situation where they were in bondage, where they were in captivity, where they were in lack, where they were experiencing all of that, I'm sure as they say that they was feeling some type of way. You know how it is right now? Some of us right now are feeling some type of way because we have experienced that we are experiencing right now. We are feeling some type of way. We are feeling some type of way. And I want to prophetically speak over you right now, just like I started this thing out, that you are stronger than your struggle. I'm going to say it again. I said, did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? I said, you are stronger than your struggle. You are stronger than your struggle. Yeah. You don't have anything to lose, yeah. but you have everything to gain. Yeah. By following God, you don't have anything to lose, but you have everything to gain. You are stronger than your struggle. 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 Come on, you are stronger than your struggle. You are stronger what you are going through. You are stronger what you experiencing right now. You just can't let your emotions, I can't let my emotions get the best of us. Watch this. Being emotional intelligence helps us to chase destiny and not distractions. I'm going to say it again. Being emotional intelligent allows us to chase destiny and not distractions. Y'all, funny. Come on, y'all messing with me today. Biddy, I'm, I'm trying to help you out right now. I'm trying to help you to manage. Listen to me. I'm trying to help you manage your emotions when they won't manage you. I'm trying to help you manage your emotions so they won't manage you. Because we allow our emotion and our feelings to manage us most of the time. Matter of fact, probably all the time, it's probably going to cause us to make a bad decision. The wrong decision. The decision is not so beneficial for us. So this allows you to manage them instead of them managing you. So being emotional intelligent helps you to chase destiny and not distraction. It's Psalms 91. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Verse 2. It says, this I declare about the Lord. He is alone and is my refuge, my place of safety he is my God, and I trust him. Can you go down to verse, just get down to verse 7 for the real quick. I ain't going to read through all that, but I got to read verse 7 real quick. Amen. It says, though a thousand oh, fall at your right at your side, 10,000 are dying all around you. 
Listen to me. These evils, these distractions, these disappointments, these setbacks, all of these things, they will not touch you. I'm going to say it again. These distractions, these disappointments, this lack, this poverty, all of this stuff, it will not touch you. I say it will not touch you. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand are dying all around you. But these evils, I don't know what your evil is in this season. I don't know what your evil is in this moment. I don't know what your evil is in, in this very moment right here. What I do know is this. Can I tell you what I do know? I don't know what that evil is, but can I tell you what I do know? Come on, can I tell you what I do know? I do know that, that they will not touch you. They will not touch you. I do know that. I do know that. I don't know what everybody's going through, but what I do know is this. They will not touch you. They will not touch you. Second thing is this. Being emotionally intelligent is not about suppressing our emotion, but it's rather about managing them and making our emotions work for us and not against us. Come on, come on, come on. It's all about making them work for us and not against us. Where do I get that from? In First Peter chapter number five, verse number seven, we quote it all the time around here. It says that give all your worries. Mm -hmm. Give all your worries. Come on. It says, give all your words. Give all your words. It says, give it unto him because God cares for you. And he cares about you. Give all your cares. All your cares. All your worries. Give them unto him because he cares for you. He cares for you. In Matthew chapter number 11, like so they're working for you. So if I if I if I know where I am, that's called self awareness. That's what my emotions and feelings are supposed to do. That's supposed to make me self aware of where I am. Then I take those emotions, I cast them to God. Y'all know what a cast means in in Greek. It means to take take something. It meant and you just throw it. Yes. So whatever it is, now symbolically, can we do that? Can we think of whatever that's worried us right now? Ooh, Let's come on, come on, come on, come on. Get it. Just get it in your head. Think yeah. about it. Think about it for a moment. Think about it for a moment. We're gonna cast it, okay? We're gonna cast. Think about it. Think about it. And I need you just to get it in your hand. Come on, get it in your hand. Get it in your hand, everybody. If you ain't got nothing to worry about, praise God. Then if you ain't worried about nothing, but if you are, praise God. If you're not, you need to come to me to see it, okay? But if you do, I just need you to think about it. Get it. In your hand, get it in your hand, and on the count of three, we just gonna cast it into the. We just gonna cast it to Jesus. Okay, come on, y'all ready? One, two, three. We cast it onto Jesus. Why? It says because He cares for us. He cares about us. He cares about. Listen to me. God cares about what you are worried about. God cares about what you care about. He cares about what's holding you back. Why? Because he says, I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. And whatever has your attention and keeping your attention and your focus off him, God says, I'm jealous about that. I'm a jealous God. God says, I want all your attention. I want all your care to be upon me. And if anything is stopping you from entering into my presence, I don't know what it is, but I know I'm talking to somebody right now. Because something has been stopping us from, hit, from entering into the presence of God. Something has been stopping us from coming to the church house of God. Something has been stopping us from meditating on the word of God. God says, I'm jealous about those things. He says, but let me tell you what, how they, let me tell you how those things can work for you. He says, if you would take all of those things, he says, if you would just cast them onto me, he says, I will take care of it. Why? The Bible declares in the book of Proverbs, he says, it says that he never sleeps, nor slumbers. So listen to me. I'm going to take that deal. You know why? Ain't no need in both of us staying up all night. If he going to stay up all night, I'm going to let him handle it. I'm going to get me some rest. If he going to be up all night because he never sleeps, no slumbers. And that word slumber means he don't get tired. It means he don't get tired, Tommy. But Tommy, watch this. 
We get to carry stuff around. Yeah. So listen, yeah. I, like, like we ain't gonna do it, but if Patrick came and stood on my shoulders, yeah. I could probably only carry him for so long, That's right? right? Y'all see where I'm going? Somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. If, 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 if I if I hold something in my hand, just like this little tablet here, if I hold it and walk around with it for so long, it's going to get heavy. My arms are going to get tired. Eventually, I'm going to drop this thing. Why? Because I'm carrying something around that I wasn't meant to carry. I'm carrying, and, and the second thing, I'm care, watch this, I'm carrying it around by choice. Because God gives us an option. He says, you can take all those words, all that stuff you are carrying around, all the baggage, all the worry, all the doubt, all the insecurities, all the lack, all your word about this happening when I told you that it's going to happen in my time. In my time, it's going to happen. So God says, if you're still carrying it, that's a choice. That's a conscious decision that you make. He says, but if you want to get rid of it, he says, I need you to take it, and I need you to cast it all upon me because I can handle it. Like, I never sleep, and I never get tired. But us, we will get tired. We'll pop. Listen to the one thing I've learned. Willpower will only last you for so long. You can say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to do it for only so long. And that one day, that one day, worry is going to get through. Doubt is going to get through your will. Like, like all of that stuff will break your willpower down. But let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says there's one who sticks closer than a friend. That's one. It says he, he's closer than a brother. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. His name is Jesus. Yeah. And the apostle Peter tells us what to do with all of that luggage and baggage that's trying to hold you down. He says, cast it upon me mm -hmm. because I care for you yeah. and I love you. In Matthew chapter number 11, 28, he tell, our emotions, he tells us to do with that as well. He says, and then Jesus said, mm -hmm. then Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. He says, all. 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 Somebody say all. all. All of you. So so what does that mean? All. It means that he's able to handle your problem. He's able to handle your problem. He's able to handle your problem. Your problem. Your problem. Your problem. Your problem. Your problem. And my problem. All at the same time. Why? He's just that big of a God. He's just that powerful of a God. That he can handle all of our troubles. All of them. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary. Watch this. All of you who are weary and says, carry heavy burdens. He says, and carry heavy burdens. He says, and I will give you rest. So what, what, what can we extract from that? We can extract from that right here is that if you carry something heavy, if you carry your cares, if you carry your doubt, if you carry your insecurities, if you're carrying all that stuff, God says, I ain't even got, I, I'm not even assuming. I know you're tired. He says, I, I don't even have, I don't even have that wonder. I don't even have to see if two plus two equals four. I don't even have to see if three plus three equals six or whatever. He says, I know you're tired. So if you've been carrying that, he says, if you come unto me, if you come unto me, he says, I will give you rest. I don't know about you, but I can use some rest in this season. I said, I don't know about you, but I can use some rest in this season. Because sometimes, truth be told, I don't care who you are, like we try and carry stuff that we should carry. We fight battles that we should fight. Where do I get that from? Because sometimes in the Bible, God tells children of Israel, he says, hey, I just need you to show up. He says, and I'm going to fight this battle for you. All you got to do is show up. All you got to do is show up. He says, and I'm going to fight this battle for you. He said, this is not your battle, but this is the lowest battle. And so if you're carrying stuff right now that you shouldn't be carrying, God, let me tell you a secret, God wants to make an exchange with you on today. He says, if you would just take all that stuff, all of that stuff, and just cast it under me, 
He says, I'm going to give you a rest. Now listen to me. There's a difference in being concerned and worried. There's a difference in being concerned and worried. You heard me say this before. Concern says, I'm thinking about it, but I'm not consumed by it. Worry says, I'm thinking about it, and it has consumed me. Worry says, I'm thinking about it, and it has consumed me. So listen to this. Concerns, concern disturbs you. Worry robs you. Concern distracts you. Worry hinders you. But listen to me. Worry, listen to me. Worry loses its momentum when you tell worry what God said about it. Okay, I'm going to talk to y'all right here. I'm going to talk to y'all. Worry loses its momentum when you tell it what God said about it. Because worry most of the time tells us what it thinks. Worry tells us how we should feel. Worry tells us what's our next move. But when you but it loses momentum when you tell it what God said about it. It loses momentum when you tell it what God said about it. That's when it loses momentum. That's when it loses momentum. When you tell it what God said about it. Again, our emotions, our feelings are simply indicators. But they can never be the dictators of where we go. The third thing about emotions is this. God's word must have authority over our emotions. God's word must have authority over our emotions. So when things are looking crazy, when things are going haywire, when things are chaotic, when you don't understand, when you're wondering when it's going to happen, when you're worried, why is this happening? When you are worried, why is this happening to me? When you are worried, I did my best. I was praying, I was doing all this stuff, and it still happened. Warrior said, Lord, when is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Why is this happening to me? Why did all that happen? I did what you said me to do. And then he says, let me tell you how to get control of all of that stuff. He says, I need you, daughter. I need you, son. I need you to go look at what my word says in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 3, verse number 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean into your understandings. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Y'all ready for this? Because in your understanding, it doesn't make sense. In your understanding, why me? In your understanding, Lord, you could have done it that way. You didn't have to do it this way. In your understanding, Lord, you could have did it like this. You didn't have to do it like that. In your understanding, in your understanding, it does not make sense. In your understanding, you begin to play God in your life. In your understanding, you'll be on the throne and put God on the throne in your understanding in your understanding he says it but if you would trust me with all your heart that simply means that phrase with all your heart simply means this it simply means you don't leave any room in your heart for doubt you don't leave any room in your heart for disbelief you don't leave any room in your heart for negativity to come in with all your heart it says that lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Y'all know what leaning is? It's like if you leaning into like you leaning this way, you know what happens? You lean this way, then you begin to go that way. I'm no longer walking on the straight and narrow. I'm leaning. And if I lean just a little bit, I'm going to get off track. If I lean just a little bit, I'm going to end up at a de destination that's never desired by God. If I lean just a little bit, he said, so don't lean and to your understanding. He said, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And watch this. Watch this. I love this. He says, because you was leaning. You was leaning me. I was off track. Get this. Watch this. I was leaning, so I got off track. He says, but when you begin to acknowledge God, He'll put you back on the right track. He will make your path straight. He will get you back in right alignment. He will get you back in the right step. That's why he says in Psalms 119, 105, he says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light unto my path. The word of God will light up your path. Psalms 37, 23 says the steps of a righteous man are already ordered. So sometimes we begin to wonder about what God's plan is for my life. But listen to me. If you are a believer, you never have to wonder about what God's plan is for your life. He says because the steps of a righteous man or woman are already planned. They're already planned. They're already laid out. So you don't have to, listen, you don't have to wonder about it. You don't have to guess about it. You simply have to trust in God. You simply have to trust in God. You simply have to tell God to be honest with God. God, I don't understand where I am right now. It don't feel good right now. It don't look good right now. I don't like it right now. It's tough right now. I'm feeling pain right now. But Lord, you know what? I'm going to trust you anyway. I'm going to trust you anyway. I'm not going to lean into my pain. I'm not going to lean into these times of uncertainty. I'm not going to lean into any of this stuff. I'm going to trust in you. And your word says you will make my path straight. Trusting in him. Leaning in him. It says this is allowing God to be your God. And it begins with a commitment Amen. to trust. Amen. It begins with a commitment to trust. Yes. It begins with a commitment with trust. I want to give you one scripture this morning. In Joshua, chapter number one, verse number nine, verse number nine a small pericope. Out of a bigger story. This is. We talked about this the other week. This is the same Joshua. That God taps on the shoulder. When his servant Moses has died. Moses was. A prophet that God. Talked to face to face. The Bible declares that he's the greatest of all. It says that. Uh, there's no other that God talked to face to face like this. And Moses had the assignment. Of taking. Bringing the children of Israel out of bondage. In Egypt and leading them to the promised land. But Moses got caught up in his emotions and he missed the promise. Yeah. So he taps Joshua on the shoulder in Joshua 1 and he says, Hey, you, Moses, my servant Moses is dead. You, and he, and, he, and listen, listen to this, listen to this. He says, My servant Moses is dead. And I love this because, watch this, he deals with Joshua emotions first. He deals with his feelings first. Watch this. He says, the same way I was with Moses, I'll be with you. The same way I was with Moses, I will be with you. Why does God do that first? Because Joshua, he, 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 was, he was an aid to Moses. And imagine you have the assignment of leading millions of people into a destination. When all you've been doing is, is assisting and helping. And now you've been tapped on the shoulder. That's like, has God ever done that to you, giving you an assignment so big you don't know how it's going to happen? Let me tell you what most of us do. When God gives us, most of us, an assignment, you know the first thing we do? How am I? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. How am I? Right. How am I gonna do this? Yeah. How am I gonna pull this out? Yeah. I don't have the resources for this. I don't have enough money for this. I don't have enough people for this. I don't have the wherewithal to do this. But can I tell you when God gives you an assignment, it's none of your business how it's gonna happen. A lot of times we try, we get the assignment and then we try and produce the results. That's where anxiety comes in. That's where frustration comes in. Because we want, we, by our natural proclivity as human beings, we want to control everything. We want to control everything. So we get the assignment, Ms. Rose, and then we try and control the results as well. Listen to me. Your assignment and what God calls you to do is simply to be obedient. You're, you got to lead the results up to God. When God tells Abraham, he says, hey, listen, I need you to leave what's familiar to you 
when he said, leave your family, your kin folks, your cousin Pookie, all of them, all of them, all of them. He says, leave them, he says, and take out walking. And listen to this, God says, take out walking. He says, and as you are walking, I will show you the way. He didn't tell Abraham that you're going over here. He says, I need you to take out walking. He says, and as you are walking, as you are going on your way, he says, and then I will show you the way. Sometimes, you know, can I let you know secret? Sometimes it's unclear. Sometimes we're saying, Lord, I, I, I'm just, I, it's not clear right now. I don't know because we are standing still. But once you begin to walk, once you begin to be obedient to what God called you to do, he says, and then I will show you the way. Most of us, including me, we want God to give us the, 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 the whole picture yeah. before we start walking. That's right. We want, like, it's, like, it's almost like playing a puzzle in life, right? We're on this journey with God. Like, God gives us this puzzle. It's just not put together. He just gives us peace. By 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 piece, one one piece at a time, and before you know it, as, as like like y'all know how it is, I see it now. As you begin to put this puzzle together, it becomes clear. Now I can see what God is doing, and God gives you another piece, but He never gives you the whole puzzle put together. And your obe, He simply said, "I just need you to be obedient." And I will produce the result. Yes, Friction, yes, frustration, anxiety yes, comes in yes. when we get the assignment and then we try and produce the results as well. The right results now. are up to God. It's on God to produce the results. It's on us to be obedient That's to right. it. Yes. So he tells Joshua, he says, he says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid for the Lord, your God, uh -huh. the Lord, your God yes. is with you wherever you wherever go. You go. Whatever means wherever. Whatever means, listen to me, listen to me real good. Listen, I need everybody looking at me, looking at me, looking at me, looking at me. Look at me. Whatever means that there's nowhere you can go and God is not with That's you. Right. Right. Listen right. to me. You can't, you can never, listen to me, you can never go outside of where? Mm. You got it. Thank you. you got it. You got it. You can never go outside of wherever. Wherever encompasses everything. You can never go outside of wherever. So wherever you go, God is with you. If you go to Egypt, God is with you. If you go to Mexico, God is with you. If you go to Israel, God is with you. If you go to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Dubai, whatever, God is. Okay, three people got it. God, God with you. Okay, God with you. God with you. Wherever you go, He is with you. So He tells Joshua, wherever you go, I am with you because Joshua had a work to do. Joshua had to lead the people into a promised land that God had promised them, but it was enemies in that land. Sometimes God will give us a promise and we still got to fight for it. I don't understand it, but it's just a plan of God. I don't understand it, but it's just a plan of God. Sometimes we think when God gives us something, we should just walk in and get it. God says, I promise it to you, but you still got to fight for it. But I'm with you wherever you go. I'm with you wherever you go. You got to fight for it, but I've given it to you. And so what does that tell you? I'm, that tells me that that tells me that I can go into any fight knowing that I have already run, won the fight before I even show up. That tells me that any fight I go towards, I've already won the fight before I even show up. I just got to show up. So he says, Joshua, I'm with you. I'm with you wherever you go, wherever you go, wherever you go. Actually, this, I got to wrap this up. I want to give you this real quick. I want to give you this. I'm going to tell you real quick why Moses, Moses missed it, right? Why Moses missed it because of his emotions, and he missed it. In Deuteronomy chapter number 34, verse 4, Deuteronomy chapter number 34, verse verse 4, real quick, it says, and this is this is at the end of Moses, like Deuteronomy uh, 34, 34 chapters in Deuteronomy, number, uh, Deuteronomy, book of Deuteronomy, and he gets to his last chapter, this is the last chapter of Deuteronomy, and he says to Moses, guys, I need you to get this, I need you to picture this for real. 
This is what happens when you let your emotions get the best of you right here. Mm. And led by your emotions. Y'all read it already. Y'all got ahead of me. I'm going to read it anyway, okay? It says, then the Lord said to Moses, this is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. Oh, my God. Watch this. Yeah, because his emotions, his emotions. Mm -hmm. It says, I have now. Guys, like picture this for real. Now, I need you to get this illustration in your mind when we allow our emotions to take mm -hmm. the best of us. Yeah. I'm guilty of this, too. Ooh, yeah. I'm the first one standing. It says, I have now allowed you to see it with your own eye, but you will not enter the land. Imagine that. Because let me tell you why. Because earlier, 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 Mo, earlier in the book, Moses, you guys know the story, Moses sees this Egyptian beating up his Hebrew brother, right? So Moses gets emotional. He gets angry. He gets mad. And it says that he takes matters into his own hand, and he kills the Egyptian. And what does Moses do? Instead of dealing with his emotions, he hides the evidence. Because the Bible says, after he kills him, he hides him in the sand. A lot of us, that's what we do a lot of time. Instead of dealing with our emotions, we try and bury our emotions. And we can't suppress our emotions. We have to manage our emotions. Because eventually, the evidence, when the situation presents itself, when I'm stimulated to act a certain type of way, that emotion is going to pop right back up. So somebody finds that, that, that the Hebrew that he had buried, and it says that he has to take off and go into the desert for like 40 years. So listen to me. Here's the good thing about God. Delay does not mean deny. deny. It does not mean deny. So three things real quick. Let me let me give you this real quickly before we go. Three things real quickly that that Moses' emotions stopped him. So three areas of transition Moses didn't manage well. Number one is this. He didn't manage the process well. He didn't manage the process well at all. The process will make you or delay you. The process will make you or it will delay you. In times of transition, in the season that we are in, if we don't, if we don't process, if we don't manage our emotions well, then the process, if we make a, a let our emotions guide us and lead us, then the process will make you or it will delay you. It delayed Moses for 40 years. But thank God, delays did not, does not mean deny. Thank God, Amen. delay does not mean deny, deny. Because all of us have been delayed in some areas sometime before. Amen. The second thing that Moses didn't manage well, y'all gonna get this, y'all gonna shout at them. He didn't manage people well. Amen. Amen. He, li listen to me. He didn't manage people well. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it says throughout his journey that the people, they was grumbling about water. They didn't have food. They was grumbling. They told Moses, you have bought us out here to die. We could have stayed what we was in Egypt. At least we was eating three meals and had some crackers and juice. And, 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 and one time they even said, why did you bring us out in the wilderness to die? They said, at least in Egypt we had graves to be buried in. And lit, like why, why their emotions and their feelings got the best of them. So in this season, in this season, I say this season, in this season, you got to watch your company. You got to watch who you're hanging around. You got to watch your connection. Connections matter in this season. I'm going to say again, connections matter in this season. If you don't get delivered from people, then people will cause you to miss your deliverance. If you don't get delivered from people, people will cause you to miss your deliverance. The people were complaining. They was grumbling. Moses got emotional because they got emotional and they caused Moses to miss the promise. God says, I'm going to let you see it, but you are not into, into it. So listen to me. Listen to me. You got to watch who you hang around. You got to watch your connections in this season because people will cause you to miss your deliverance. Yes, Third thing is when you ready to close is this. He didn't he didn't manage pressure well. Mm. Yes. He didn't manage the pressure well. Yes, God. 
All of us are going to experience pressure at some point in time in our life. We have to understand this. Is that ships, big boat ships, ships don't sink because of the water that's on the outside of them. Ships sink when water gets on the inside of them. That's right. The Bible declares that we are in this world, but this world should not be in us. Paul says it like this in Romans chapter number 12, verse number 2. He says, be not conformed to the systems of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so you may do what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So ships do not sink because what's on the outside of them. They sink because of what's on the inside of them. But how many of you know that is a type of boat called a submarine that is designed that to, to go deep, deep in the water. The Bible declares that Jesus is the anchor of our soul. He's the anchor of our soul. What does an anchor do? An anchor holds you in place. An anchor stops you from wavering. An anchor stops you from being tossed and thrown from wave to wave and from, from place to place. Jesus is the anchor of our soul. So I'll, how many submarines do I have in here on the day who are designed to go deep in water, who is able to handle pressure? Moses allowed pressure to stop him from reaching the promise. He allowed it from reaching allowed it to stop him from reaching the promise. As we get ready to close. I want to end this how I started this. Yes. Hear your prophetic, prophetic declaration at the beginning. Yes. You are stronger than your struggle. Mm -hmm. yes. You are stronger than your struggle. Yes. And you don't have anything to lose. But you have everything to gain. Come on, if you receive that, you gotta hang up. Praise the Lord.